Instrumentation Technique at the Speed of Understanding, Chapter 1. In this first of a two-part series, we will investigate fundamental principles of root canal instrumentation with the intent of expanding your understanding. Why is understanding our focus? Understanding enables us to apply knowledge flexibly in unfamiliar circumstances. It provides us a means to differentiate what's valid from invalid, efficient from inefficient, and predictable from unpredictable. Most importantly, it affords us the ability to demonstrate differences with scientific evidence. So what's the goal of instrumentation technique? The goal for an effective technique is to maximize efficiency while minimizing instrument stress. Unfortunately, virtually every set of instruments has its own recommended technique. But evidence-based evaluations of techniques can eliminate assumptions that might otherwise result in wasted time and unnecessary risk. In truth, principles outlining the most effective technique should be the same for all instruments. In pursuit of just such an evidence-based solution, Dr. John McSpadden designed a computer-controlled clinical simulator to precisely execute motions used during canal preparations and to eliminate additional variability such as operator skill. With it, a variety of parameters may be programmed to define the motions of each size and sequence of files used in preparing diverse or standardized anatomies, while the component stresses impacted upon each file is recorded over time. Comparing data from these evaluations allows us to determine the most effective or efficient sequence and manner in which files can be used to reduce time, effort, and risk while avoiding file failure. This same testing device may also be used to determine the best file for use within specific canal anatomies. While conducting more than 2,000 such evaluations, the most important technique principles for all files became apparent. And what were these principles? Well, first, advance a file into the canal with no more than one millimeter increments using insert withdrawal pecking type motions and resist any screwing in forces to one millimeter as well. Two, advancement into the canal should be able to occur at a rate of approximately one half millimeter per second with each insertion without increasing the force of insertion. When this can no longer be accomplished, immediately change files. And third, when changing files, always change to a file having a different taper. Knowing and adhering to these three principles will enable practitioners to accomplish canal preparations effectively without the risks of breakage, blockage, or ledging. But let's not forget that just knowing something has its limitations. Expertise, or determining the best approach for a desired solution and being able to accomplish it most efficiently and effectively, that requires understanding. Let's turn our attention to understanding the first principle and why we advance into the canal with only one millimeter increments. The total amount of file engagement may be the same whether it advances five millimeters all at once or through five separate one millimeter insertions. The difference with excessive advancement is that it results in the compaction and abrasion of accumulated debris impacting excessive torsional stress on the file. Note the distortion caused by advancing several millimeters in a single motion. Remarkably, the remainder of this canal can still be prepared by the same pre-stressed file without incurring any additional distortion simply by using incremental advancements even though the total amount of file engagement has increased. Advancement into the canal should be able to occur at a rate of approximately one half millimeter per second with each insertion without increasing the force of insertion. When this can no longer be accomplished, immediately change files. The reason? The file may have encountered a curvature. Consistency is a key indicator that we are using the appropriate file. If we find that we have to apply more force, it means the circumstances are changing. At this point, it's prudent to change to a file that will allow us to continue adhering to our principles.
The reason could also be that the file encountered a constriction. The file should always be making progress into the canal. Otherwise, staying in one position or repeatedly going to the same position may cause ledging, blockage, or cyclic fatigue. Additionally, too much of the file may have become engaged. In each of these circumstances, the file used may require an increase in pressure for advancement. If the file does require more pressure, it is no longer the ideal file for the circumstances. However, the circumstances can be changed simply by reducing the area for file engagement by changing the sequence and taper of files. Remember, our goal is to minimize stress and maximize efficiency. And that brings us to the third principle. When changing files, always change to a file having a different taper. The reason? The torque required to rotate a file varies directly with the surface area of the file's engagement. Files with different tapers were designed to minimize the stress the file encounters by limiting its engagement. If a file is used to advance the preparation of the previous file having the same taper, any advancement will cause maximum engagement. If the taper of a file is larger than the taper of the canal, there will only be coronal engagement initially, and additional engagement will occur gradually during advancement. If the taper of the file is smaller than the taper of the canal, there will be apical engagement initially, and additional engagement will occur gradually during advancement. It becomes apparent that changing tapers minimizes engagement, reduces file stress, and increases efficiency. Although adhering to the principles we've discussed will enable preparation of virtually any case effectively and without the risk of file failure, it does not assure us that we are using the most efficient sequence of instruments. Efficiency improves as we apply the physics describing the relationships of instrumentation and canal anatomy. This is particularly true as anatomies become more complex. So what are the physics for file anatomy relationships? One, the torque required to rotate a file varies directly with the surface area of the file's engagement. Two, Resistance to torsional stress decreases directly with the decrease in the square of the file's diameter. Three, fatigue of a file increases with the square of the file's diameter. And four, fatigue of a file increases with the degree of curvature and the number of rotations. Let's examine the first relationship. The torque required to rotate a file varies directly with the surface area of the file's engagement. It's important to know how much additional engagement occurs with each advancement. This is likely much more than what you might expect, and it's particularly important when preparing curved canals. Let's visualize advancing a 2506 to a specific depth, preparing a canal to that size. Now let's follow the 2506 with a 2504. If we advance this smaller file just two millimeters deeper, how much of it will become engaged? Only two millimeters of advancement results in seven millimeters of engagement. The second file anatomy relationship states, resistance to torsional stress decreases directly with a decrease of the square of the file's diameter. If there's sufficient torque to rotate the larger diameter portion of a file, it can be more than sufficient to break the smaller diameter portion of the file. This is particularly important to keep in mind when using torque limiting hand pieces. These last two file anatomy relationships beg questions we should always keep in mind. How large can a file be before it risks separation? How is the degree of curvature impacting the file? And how is the number of rotations impacting the file? A 2502 file inserted into a glass elbow with a 90 degree curvature while rotating separated at 15 millimeters from its tip where it had a 0.55 millimeter diameter. 
Using the same methodology, a 2504 was inserted, only to have it separate at 7 mm from the tip, where it also had a 0.55 mm diameter. Note that the files with different tapers broke at the same diameter, but the file having a taper twice as large as the other broke twice as soon. Cookbook type recommendations often have no regard for file anatomy relationships, even though they are essential to understanding how we should instrument to achieve the greatest efficiency, effectiveness, and safety. This 2006 has a 0.56 mm diameter 6 mm from its tip, right where it would engage this 90 degree curvature. A 2006 is routinely recommended to be taken to working length, yet we just saw separation at this diameter in the same degree curvature with no engagement. Adhering to the principles discussed will prevent cyclic fatigue, torsional breakage, ledging, and blockage. Remember that efficiency and safety are easily enhanced with constant consideration of the four essential anatomy file relationships. Of course, files themselves are also a very important consideration for completing effective, efficient canal preparations. They too have undergone the same type of comprehensive investigation. For a more in-depth approach to file selection and technique recommendations for canal preparation, refer to the following links and always feel free to contact us.